if I would um, just do a, a little dialogue about 3D printing first. No, it's not a valid photo, whatever that means. Oh, hold on. It's looking for something. Open with. Very quick. Open with. So it's just open? No. Open with, with okay. Uh, components. Components. This? Mm -hmm. No. It's not because it's got a Dutch name. Open way. How about just pictures here? Okay. okay. Oh, it actually worked. So I have a I have way too many projects, and one of my that's amazing. It disappears by itself. Um, one of the projects I have is I'm attempting to build a Daimler Mercedes D3A engine. And one of the minor components I'm missing are the rocker arms, which are these two items here, the inlet and the exhaust rocker arms. Um, and I couldn't find any, oddly enough. They weren't easily available. But I had some contacts at the Aviodrome in uh, Holland, um, at the, which is the National Aviation Museum, or as I call it, the Tony Fokker Museum, because there's <laughs> virtually nothing else there except for his stuff, and they have a spare motor. And while they wouldn't let me have their engine, they did offer to take out two rocker arms and mail them to me. And, and I don't know about the Dutch Postal Service, but I had very little faith in the Canadian Postal Service actually getting them to me and returning them intact. And um, I asked them if there was another option, and we talked a little bit, and they had a volunteer who used to be a 3D CAD modeling person with Fokker some time ago who was working on his own project, uh, Fokker project, and he volunteered to generate um, 3D models. Let me move this up a bit. To generate a... How do I go to the next image here, Carl? Mm, just minimize this and... Yeah, okay. Um, generate 3D models... Uh, who generated the 3D models in an aerospace-specific program called CATIA. Um, these were then translated into SOLIDWORKS, which is probably the standard CAD-CAM design program, not necessarily the language that speaks to CNC machines, but is used to generate models. And it was this model that you see of the inlet and uh, exhaust rocker arms that were used to generate um, via 3D printing or rapid prototyping um, two arms for me to use to basically prove that the design was correct and everything would fit in the original engine. And literally what they've done is created a surface model um, by m direct measurement from the originals that you saw in the first photograph. The hardest part of 3D printing is generating a file to print from. The printing process is pretty straightforward. Um, and the printing process, uh, for most equipment, there are no absolutes in the 3D printing business. Uh, as a quick um, add-on, I was actually in the 3D printing <coughs> business as a supplier of 3D printing objects to people um, as a subset of a printing company that I owned. And the way they work, as I call it the slice and dice method of printing, is that they take the three-dimensional model and actually slice it up into a series of predefined thickness 2D files. And they generate in a series of 2D layers, like taken slice and ham on a delicatessen or something, um, off the file and building one layer at a time. What you end up paying for when you get a 3D print is really the time it takes to print. The materials, almost no matter what technology except for centered metals, the materials themselves are very inexpensive. But the finer the slices, the longer it takes, the higher the cost for the object that you're doing. Um, and when something like this will print, um, the specific machine that I used has an absolute precision in it of about 25 microns, which is 
pretty fine tolerance, and it's as fine as the original item was machined. There's no absolutely no go forward in this, eh? From image to image. Okay. No, maybe if you select all three, it might work. But you, don't, you only I have could, one image but selected. I'm, but I'm almost finished. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. So these are the rocker arms. Um, the items that are missing are the rollers that go through here. You may or may not be surprised to know that in 19. 15, when the D3 engine first came out, that it did have a single overhead cam engine with roller rockers. Wow. Your small block shaft wasn't first. <coughs> and um, uh, what, so they're missing in here, and there's hardened pins that hold them in place, and they would work directly off the cam. These two are actually sitting in the camshaft carrier for the D3A motor that sits on top of the cylinders. And they fit bang on. The process after this was going to go back and generate casting masters from the same 3D file to go out and actually cast new steel, um, or sorry, new cast iron rockers, which would be strong enough in this application, and then um, use a cylindrical grinder to do the bearing surfaces, which are the areas about like that and about like that on each one. As it turned out, um, I've had a series of original rocker arms offered to me, so <laughs> I don't need them. But I thought you'd be interested into seeing that this is a more industrial application and an interesting one to a researcher of a way to be able to get into your hands an original object without having the original object. Um, if somebody wanted to be able to print these, in theory, they could contact me. I'll say in theory. They could contact me. I could send them this file, and they could find a local provider to, prevent, to print them a full-size D3A rocker arm. So I just thought as an add-on to your talk this morning that you'd find that interesting. The other part, you, and this is very low-tech, by the way. Um, many of you may not be aware of the fact that GE has been producing compressor blades via centered metal technology 3D printing for several years now. So, who knows, the airplane that flew down and could have 3D printed compressors in it. John, you wouldn't yes. trust uh, a 3D printing of those rocker arms, would you, at this point? Well, not that. This is, I call it, I personally have always called this weed whacker technology. This is ABS plastic. And it comes on spools very much like the plastic filament you put inside a weed whacker. No, I'm not talking about the plastic, but a, a metal 3D printing of... Um, it's... It came to the price point about a year ago when I was looking at getting these made with centered metal. And they were going to have to use a titanium alloy because they the other metals that were available weren't strong enough. Mm. And you have to realize that what you're basically doing is fusing dust together. Right. Um, so this the strength of the material, fortunately, these are very low stress items. There's the valve springs on the Daimler Mercedes engine are very low tension. Mm -hmm. um, and people much smarter than I who did a, a quick analysis on it said that they would be strong enough, which you know, when you only have one airplane engine, isn't the most reassuring thing. <laughs> um, I worked out a program with a CNC machinist where we worked out a way that we could actually um, CNC the arms. This arm, in the end here, it takes a, uh, basically a grub screw or a, a, um, a headless bolt um, threaded, and that's what operates directly on the end of the valve stem. And the rocker here, I, could act, I can actually source a hardened steel ruler, identical in dimension to the original Mercedes Daimler one, um, from a bearing supply house. And what we were going to do is turn the shafts. These were going to be made by water jet cutting mm -hmm. and pressed and brazed on. Um, what you can't see is that there's numerous different heights to this cylinder, the mm -hmm. basic shaft. And this was going to be the only CNC managed part. And we worked out that we could make these arms for about 50 to $60 a piece. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was 
about a tenth of the cost of the centered metal technology at, this point. Um, at the time. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've had somebody offer me original rock arms. But I just thought you'd maybe interested in seeing a more, um, another, another use for 3D printing technology. Thank you, John. I never thought to call Glenn Torrance and ask him to make rocker and <laughs>